all should kind of recognize my face by now. I am Skylar with Lean Frontiers. Today we have Mike Martin on the screen. We are actually going to let you all fall in and then I'm going to hand it right on over. And I believe numbers are kind of slowing down. So Mike, it's on to you. You're good to go. It's on to me. Okay, yeah. I'm good to go. Thanks, Skylar. I appreciate it. Um, Good morning. I mean, I'm on the West Coast, so it's still morning here, 11 o'clock. I'm uh, excited to be able to join you today and share a little bit of what I've been working on the last few years that's culminated in a book, um, really kind of capturing some of the learning that I've had as a consultant to organizations over the last you know, 10 years or so. And just also what I find inspiring as a leader and about developing leaders. So I know I've got uh, 20 minutes. I am going to uh, really do my best to stay right to that. So I'm going to jump into it. Um, just a little bit about this talk and a little bit about me. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I was joking with Skylar. I don't really feel like I'm that interesting, uh, but I do feel like the work I get to do is interesting. So I have been um, working with organizations for the past 20 years. I started out as a turnaround uh, uh person where I would go into companies and actually fix them, restore them to health, bring in new managers or lead, you know, uh, recruit new leaders and go on to the next one. And that turned into getting to help organizations around the world. Uh, I've been associated with Shingo for the last 20 years. And a lot of my work is really around designing cultures that really engage and empower people to make uh, the, the environment better every day and to improve their performance. And that has really um, gotten a lot into developing leaders, whether it's executive teams that I work with, developing their strategy and helping them uh, you know, with succession planning, or it's a lot of work to develop new to role leaders. And so what we're gonna talk about today is based on a book that I have coming out. I hope, knock on wood, it's going to be out of the uh, publishers in the next 30 days or something. It's taken a while to get it through it. Uh, but it's it's called Management for Amotanashi. And it's really using this concept of Amotanashi, which is it was just a Japanese concept of creating this, this amazing experience, using that as a way to talk about what we can do as leaders to create an environment that engages and inspires people to not only contribute to help the organization be better every day, but also creates a sense of pride, a pride in their work and pride in their contribution. So that's really what we're going to um, talk about. And, you know, I, I put this slide up. Uh, I've used it a number of times and, and people are familiar with it, with it if you're at all familiar with Gallup and the research that they do. And... The reason that I put this up here is for two, you know, the reason I find this so compelling is for two reasons. Number one is that, you know, when you go back and look at Gallup over time and look at some of their, their information and their data, it hasn't significantly changed. Meaning, you know, we've seen some engagement go up the last few years, engagements dropped again. But when you look at really this idea of how are we doing as leaders and as managers engaging our people, you know, Gallup really brought it down to said, hey, listen, 30% of the leaders that they see know how to engage their people. They're doing a good job at it. Their people are fired up. They're inspired. You know, it's really working. 50% um, of them are just there. They're just present. They're not really having a positive effect. They're not really having a negative effect, but they're just kind of hanging out as leaders with respect to engaging their people. But 20% in their words, are just lousy. You know, they're really, you know, in in, uh, in my terms, I would say, you know, sometimes, you know, with leaders, it like people are more engaged when you're not around than when you are around. And that's kind of a problem. You know, we really want to try to help you do something about that. And, and the second reason I think this is significant is that when it comes to team engagement, when it comes to creating an environment where people are inspired to contribute, to do Kaizen, to continuously improve, managers, management skill and their ability to engage their people is the single largest factor causing the variance that they see. It's, it accounts for 70% of the variance. Okay, so, so understanding how to lead in an environment of continuous improvement is 
I would say even my, my experience more important than just understanding the tools, the techniques and the systems of continuous improvement. And that was really borne out to me um, over the last two years, you know, uh, 10 years, uh, about 10 or 11 years ago, I published a book called Own the Gap. And really the purpose of that book was to help define for my clients uh, the role that a management system plays in creating daily Kaizen, creating team-based daily Kaizen. And, you know, I detailed out the elements that I saw that were best practice across the organ across organizations, uh, Shingo best practices, and really came down to a fundamentally core and uh, management system that said, if you have these elements and you make them your own, you're really going to start to create this environment where people work together as teams and they really view Kaizen as, as part of their work. It is their work. It's not an addition to. Now, what happened with that is that a lot of organizations took the book and they, they kind of dissected it, made a checklist, and then kind of imposed it on their people as just another set of tools or, or another set of systems, you know, that said, here's a go do. And what we were seeing is, is that you could see two different teams, two different leaders using a similar management system, but those leaders that really understood how to engage their people. And, and we, you know, I put it into a coaching camp years ago where I taught leaders how to connect with their people, how to engage them every day, how to grow their skills and capabilities, and how to create an environment of appreciation. And when you did that, you could see them, in essence, using the same management system but getting five times the results. I mean, really, literally, just getting five times the performance. Now, that really led me on this journey of experimenting with it and saying, well, so what's the difference? What are these leaders doing? You know, how are they getting these better results? What are they focused on that is leading to performance? We're all trying to get great results for the organization, better results and improved performance. But why is focusing on that people side why is really focusing on our ability to connect, engage, grow, and appreciate leading to better results when we're all using similar tools? Now, that was kind of the basis um, of, you know, take that experience and then combine it with a gentleman I met in Japan, uh, Teru Oyabe. Yabe, he was the former chairman of Tese, the cleaning company. And I'll tell you a little bit more about him in a second. But you kind of combine my experience with coaching and what I had seen with these results with meeting him and hearing about his experience uh, with turning around his own organization. And it really kind of started to come together. And I really uh, you know, wanted to put together information about what I had seen and, and really boiling it down that said, hey, as managers or, or as leaders, our primary purpose, what we're really here to do is to maximize the passion the purpose and the contribution of our people so that they not only can, but, but willingly want to help that org our organization be better every day. Okay, so what I want to do today is to go through these three elements, this passion, purpose, and performance, tell you a little bit about what it means to me, you know, what I wrote about and kind of showed how, how to do it. And then if, if at all you're inspired by that or you're thinking, you know, I, I, I like this approach, I really want to think about this, then I'll give you a couple of steps as to where we start with that. And I think that'll kind of round out our time. All right. So the first is purpose. That what, uh, what we've witnessed in organizations who really have engaged, engaged people and engaged leaders and what I saw really coming to the forefront and really uh, magnified in, in Yabe and his work with his people was this idea that purpose is how well we are connecting and how well our people feel connected to our vision. Okay, do we have a vision that's inspiring uh, or does our vision sounds like we did a Google search and we kind of melded three together and they all start to sound pretty similar? Or have we really resonated with what our reason for being is, you know, what motivate, what gets us all up in the morning to want to come to our organization, to want to come to work, to look forward to it, and to really feel like we are part of a connected community that's aligned and working toward common outcomes. 
So that creating an environment as, as a leader, as a manager, where I have really purposefully helped connect each and every one of the people I'm responsible for to that vision is an important part of them really being engaged and maximizing their role in the organization. Now, once I do that, I've got to think about how I'm going to create an environment where people can bring their passion forward. And when we say passion, what I really mean there is this, this idea that I take pride in my work, that I don't just come to work, but work is an opportunity for me to feel good about who I am, what I do, and, and to really feel that, that the contribution that I'm making matters. It matters to myself. It matters to my team members, but it also it matters to that larger community, whether I think of that as the customers that I serve or, or, or a community at large. So we, you know, through our use of an engaging management system and through our use of really connecting people and really engaging them in continuous improvement, we create this opportunity where people can take pride you know, they, they can see the fruits of their labor. They can really sense and, and show you exactly where their thumbprints have been placed all over the organization through their contribution to helping us improve our performance. So we need purpose. We need to create this environment of passion. And then what we need to do is through the use of goal setting, our strategy, and, and our Kaizen opportunities, or, you know, really our improvement opportunities, we need to allow people a chance to accomplish meaningful challenges. We need to not shy away from red, as they say, if you're, if you're familiar with that, you know, embrace the red. We need to not shy away from creating gaps, but actually as leaders create gaps and inspire and challenge our people to close those gaps. And through that, they can see improved performance. They can really note where they were versus where they are right now. So if we're thinking about these three things, then I'm thinking about these three Ps and I'm saying, okay, I mean, yes, am I using tools and systems to, to help me do this? Of course. But what I really wanna use when I think about, you know, that management system we have or that approach to engaging and aligning our people, I wanna ask myself these questions. I wanna say, okay, so what activities do I have as a leader that are really meaningful in order to, and for the purpose of really connecting them to our vision, to our reason for being? Do they feel connected with it? Number two, through the use of Kaizen, um, participating in huddles, you know, following up on improvements, do they have an opportunity to really take pride in what they do, to really develop that passion, to know that they're valued as a person, they're trusted for their opinion, and they really know that they're making good contributions. And then finally, through our use of strategy and goal setting, maybe you could think about it also from development plans, if you do that with your people, one-on-one -on -one coaching, have I really helped my people embrace gaps? Have I provided them with some meaningful challenges so that they can feel a sense of accomplishment in what they've done? Okay, if I can do those three things, or if I can ensure that those three types of activities really are at the heart of my management system, then I guarantee you, you will have better results using the same tools. I've seen it over and over again in manufacturing environments, in service-based environments, in financial environments, okay? And I, I told you I'd get back to, I'd get back to, uh, Yabe here and how this relates, but you know when it came to to meeting him. Now Tesse is the cleaning company that cleans the bullet trains in, in the Shinkansen in Japan. And when I met him for the first time a number of years ago, and I listened to his philosophy of leadership, and I found it fascinating that he described it as his philosophy. You know uh, that that we needed a philosophy. I started listening to him talk about, you know, passion in his people, about how Kaizen and that role was significant. And so, you know, you saw this 
purpose that he really transformed uh, the purpose of a job from being something that was viewed as lowly and and it was the kind of job cleaning the trains where parents i mean it just ripped your heart out when parents would come up and you know point out to somebody working on the train cleaning to their kids and say if you if you don't continue your education and work hard you could end up like that i mean just you hear some of these stories and it just you know if you'd all care about people it just really gets to you transforming that to an environment where these people were put on display, where they viewed it as Shinkansen theater, creating this unbelievable experience that people could take home as souvenirs. And then watching all of the feedback they would get and the you know grandkids being excited and, 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 and proud of their grandparents working at this, at this organization, for example. And then that ended up turning into being benchmarked all over the world. They have, um, you know, a Broadway play that was created about their special level of service. Okay. So they, they rebranded purpose and they made daily Kaizen, daily Kaizen, Ideas every day, the hallmark of their leadership approach. They didn't overcomplicate it. They said, this is what we need. We need ideas from everyone every day aligned to this purpose of creating amazing memories for our people. And then finally, through the way that they followed up as leaders, through ensuring that they reported out on their results, but also in creating recognition, what they called angel reports, they really set these big challenges for their people, but ensured that through this recognition, they got a sense of accomplishment. They could see the progress that they were making. Okay, so it was an excellent, I mean, I mean, I used it a lot in the, in the book because it was just an excellent uh, example of an organization where, you know, they, Yabe transformed what it meant to be a leader, the philosophy behind leadership. And they really ensured that their management system was aligned in a way that it, in, that it really put daily Kaizen, engaging everybody every day first, and recognizing accomplishments, you know, really closing the loop on this achieving uh, meaningful challenges, you know, this improved performance. Okay? Now, I know this is kind of a whirlwind, you know, 20 minutes goes by pretty quick. So... Let's talk about next steps or let's talk about, you know, let's say, okay, you know, either I've not done any of this work before and I'm really new to this and I'd like to ensure that we, you know, put people first and we really leverage these principles. Or if I've been doing, um, you know, uh, uh, lean or, or continuous improvement or operational excellence for years, and I really would like to ensure that what we're doing is aligning to some of the power that's contained uh, within these principles of, you know, having purpose, passion, and performance really being at the forefront. I think the first step is to really define and adopt a philosophy, your leadership philosophy, your management philosophy that puts it out there either individually for you. So it keeps it front and center, or it puts it out there for your organization that says, listen, if we want to have our best results, we do that by placing people before profit. We do that by ensuring that purpose, passion, and performance on an individual team, a departmental level are really at the forefront. And we want to accept our role as leaders as creating an environment where people can take, where they can take pride, or we call it, you know, you can read in the book about Ikigai, where they, they find that meaning and that purpose and that pride in their work. So that's the first step. I find very few organizations have really taken the time to say, you know, they have a vision, they have a mission, they have their values, maybe their operating principles, but to really succinctly tell you what their philosophy of leadership is, is not as clear. Now, once I do that, then the second is to either design or align, depending upon how far you're, you are along with your daily management system, a system which connects everyone through strategy, encourages growth through setting those challenges, and really helps leaders view their role more as coaches in this work, 
rather than, um, you know, as Yabe would say, managers who believe their job is to control variables. He was very specific in our conversations over the years about, you know, management doesn't equal controlling variables. That management's job or leadership's role is really to bring forth the best in people. And we do that through our mentoring, our coaching, and are really putting people into the best position through our management system. Okay, so the first step is to define it. Get that? What is the philosophy? Number two, the second, design or align my management system so that that philosophy can come to life. Finally, I really need to commit to Kaizen being at the core. That really it's this daily opportunity for people to see something, say something, and do something about it, which allows us to create that great um, uh, sense of passion, which allows us to really start to maximize engagement. And it's really, Kaizen is really where the, the why, the what, and the how all come together for not only our, our work as leaders to engage our people, but also to radically improve our organization through incremental progress. Okay, so those three things. Now, of course, in the book, and, and, and you know, I go into more depth about how to do that, but those three fundamental steps are critical to kind of creating this Amotenashi culture where leaders and team members are really having this great experience together. Now, lastly, I'll leave you with just a thought. And again, um, you'll be able to have these slides. Uh, I, I, I will send them and they'll get sent to you. But when, when defining the philosophy, I've said, hey, that's the first thing that's most important. You know, do, you, do you know what your philosophy of leadership is and do you have it defined is this, you know, and put out there? I would say number one is, is the philosophy aligning to where you see you want to go long term, to some kind of a, a long term um, vision of success? Or is the philosophy just merely a statement of here is what managers do, here is what leadership leaders do. So number one is make sure it aligns to the vision. Number two, is it succinct? Is it compelling? You know, does it really connect with a why that that my people would care about? Okay, or when they look at it, you know, would, might they read my leadership philosophy and say, that's the type of leader I want. That's the type of manager I've been looking for as I change jobs and I'm looking around to find a, a home. Okay, and finally, you know, if we're doing these things, does this, can we see how this philosophy that we're adopting, this philosophy that we would like to get throughout our organization, do we see how it's going to benefit our people? you know, not only our team members, but those that we serve and the organization. Okay. So, you know, really, I, I hope that what we've done in our short time is to say, listen, number one, if you want the best results, even if you're doing already doing operational excellence or, or a lean management system, then really focusing on purpose, passion, and this accomplishment, this performance through accomplishment I've personally seen dramatic, dramatically improved results. And to do that, then I, I really need to start with, you know, declaring to myself, and I really believe declaring to the organization, or even if it's just my team, you know, if, if I'm just doing this individual and I just want to be a better leader, you know, declaring what I really believe my role is as a leader, my philosophy behind that, and then really making sure that my management system and my commitment to allowing people to improve every day is in alignment with that. If you do it, I really believe, and you'll see improved results, you know, not only uh, improved results in your metrics, but what I see from team members and their, their engagement with the organization, their connection with their leader, and their just loyalty to the organization also starts to rise dramatically. Okay, whew, that was pretty close. I don't think I kept within the 10 minutes there, Skylar, but... Uh, I tried to be close for 10 minutes for Q&A. It was perfect. I think I got five left. You did great. All we right. Do we have any questions or? Okay. Oh, go ahead. We do have five minutes for Q&A. So if anybody has any questions, they can chat it in. And um, if not, like Mike did say, I will be sending out the... PowerPoint as long or as well as a recording within 24 to 48 hours. 
Um, Mike, do you see that question or would you like for me to read it to you? Uh, let me, okay, okay. Uh, how do you deal with, yes, I see it, I see it. How do you okay. deal with pushback from individuals who are stuck in their ways? Um, okay, so I'm gonna assume that what you mean are individuals, maybe leaders who might be stuck in their ways or, you know, like I, I, I'm doing what I, okay, great, thanks, Daniel. Um, all right, what I have found is, is that most of the leaders, even if the ones that are stuck in their ways, they really want to improve performance or they need to have, ensure they have performance, right? They've got some expectations as leaders. And so what I really try to do is rather than, you know, tell them, well, here's the best way you should do it and you should change the way that you lead. Because a lot of these people have gotten to their level of success by doing some great things is I really try to show them by example with some areas and with their teams how we can improve performance through some of this uh, adjustment, through really changing the way we do certain things, changing the way we operate in our management system, tweaks here and there. And once they really see improved um, performance, I find it's, it's catching. I mean, really, honestly, they want to find it a little bit more. But I've really got to ease it in so they can see it versus – coming across with a tone that almost makes it sound like, uh, it, forget about what you've done from now on, you know, here's the way you need to be as a new leader, okay? Um, how are Shingo principles aligned? Uh, how are principles aligned to the Shingo principles, Patrick? Uh, Patrick, I think it's all over aligned with respect um, and humility, you know, the cultural enablers of, um, of Shingo, I mean, the, you know, when you dig into the Shingo model, I mean, you're going to find that empower and engage everyone, you know, lead with humility, ideas coming from everywhere. Those definitely are in alignment. I think also the big opportunity is for um, enterprise alignment in terms of establishing some constancy of purpose. Uh, with your leadership style, with what you want from leaders, with kind of how you aspire to lead in a different way. You know, if we think about the enterprise alignment, also constancy of purpose, there's really opportunities to um, really solidify that more as well. All right, let me see if I can, oh, okay. Uh, what's been your most memorable experience sharing the vision and the reason? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know if I can say what is the most memorable because I'm sure if I said that somebody else is going to say, well, no, 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 it was somebody else. But I will tell you that I have one right now, a very large organization globally. It's a, um, uh, automotive manufacturer, uh, a, a supplier, and we are really working right now to move past this vision being only, you know, uh, provide quality services to ensure that we don't disrupt our customers' needs, yada, yada. You know, it's it's like that. And right now, we together as a, as a senior leadership team are crafting this approach to leadership, which is tapping into much more about what they hope to achieve for their people. Uh, they're getting past, you know, it's almost like, of course, we're going to do quality and everything, but why would you really want to come to our organization to be part of our family and, 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 and to enrich your life with it? And I would say that, I mean, it's just really on the top of my mind because the conversations and really how I am watching like an engineering group and an HR group really meet in the middle with what they view both of their roles are has been pretty fascinating to see. It's been really fun. Um, okay, how do we align someone to a continuous improvement goal they feel is too much work? Um, great question, Kevin. That's only about 98% of the people that I meet. I'm joking. I've kind of got a dry sense of humor. Um, okay, I'm gonna say that what I have experienced a lot and what I'm experiencing more and more is that helping people not see continuous improvement as too much work has to really be put within the context of focusing strategy to be doable. Uh, meaning when I am working with leadership groups on their strategy, you know, I had one recently and they had for the year, literally 369 strategic initiatives that were gonna happen that year. Now let's be clear, they're not gonna happen that year. There's no such thing as getting that much done. I've dealt with some of the best teams I've ever worked with, and there's only so much you can do. So what we're really trying to do when we help teams is we are really trying to ensure, first and foremost, that what we've committed to for that year 
is focused and aligned. Okay. And it's got to feel meaningful from that, from that standpoint. And when we do that, we're not just asking for more continuous improvement because we want more continuous improvement. We're really putting them into a position where they are looking at their daily activities and adjusting what they do to help us accomplish these few focused and purposeful goals. I know that probably sounds super big and daunting, but man, it's just, if we start this big and then we shove it all down and ask them to, to improve, it can be overwhelming. If we relentlessly focus on a critical few and we use that to engage them in helping us get there, I find that teams find ways to take 15 minutes and 20 minutes out of their day to improve versus looking at us as leaders is going, are you kidding me? I already had too much to do and now you're, you know, you're, you're loading on more. Whew. All right. I'm seeing that being the last one of the questions. I hope I, I hope I got them all. Oh, what do, will you do a revision? <laughs> That's funny. Patrick, you're a plant. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, funny enough that own the gap it's, 10 years this next year from when it won the Shingo Research Prize. So yes, the plan is um, literally to do a 10 year anniversary, second edition, put in a lot more about the how um, to really work through what we've seen over the last 10 years that works with it. And hopefully, uh, you know, bring in some themes that, hey, the, the model wasn't meant to just be a checklist. It was really meant to be a start of allowing you the, to see the 70%, like this is what we really need to make it work, but to also challenge yourself with that 30% to make it your own. So uh, yes, oh, you've had it for nine years. There you go. All right, it's about time I did something, huh? All right, Patrick's publicly calling me out. I love it. All right, 2023. And Patrick, if you've got, I'm gonna be sending it out. Get in touch with me. We're gonna be sending it out to clients for also, um, uh, examples you know what i mean if you have examples where some of these con you know parts of them of the management system have really come to life and you're willing to share it'd be great so so i'll be throwing that out as well all right i'm a couple minutes over time you're so good I stop sharing huh hold on all How right thank I? you so much mike for facilitating today and thank you to everybody who participated and sent in your questions um a Reminder, you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. If you do have any questions, um, feel free to contact Mike directly, and we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks for the opportunity, Jim Schuyler. Thanks. Talk You're to welcome. You soon. Bye, Mike.